Hello and welcome back to the vlog. It's been quite a break since I last put an episode out, but uh, as you can see, change of scene. I'm now inside my house because absolutely nothing was drying in the garage at all since like November. It was taking two, three, four days for any small coat of PVA, etc., to dry, so it became impossible to work on it. So board sections are in here one at a time, uh, or two maybe, to get things moving. Um, it's made a big difference already. I'm able to get through about a section a day at the moment, which is a huge progress. It is the finalization steps, so we'll be going over the last finishing touches as well as a look at the trees uh, and the scatter pieces. And uh, hopefully after that, uh, the next vlog will be probably the last one, I guess, as I kind of take a recap of where everything is. Uh, but uh, let's dive in. Okay, so here's a close up of the um, modular ring system that I've used, where I used the MDF ring around the edge of where insertable trees and rocks and things will go. Um, right now the base won't actually fit in here because Flock has ended up in here and there's a little bit of the plaster uh, sculptor mold mix ended up kind of going over the edge of the ring. So what I'm doing is using a chisel. If anyone does woodworking, please don't judge me on this super cheap chisel that I haven't looked after very well. Um, I'm just gonna run it around the inside of the ring here like this just to shave off anything that stops the, the ring from fitting snugly. And then once I'm done, you can see it chips the edge ever so slightly. Um, so I will just paint this in brown um, and then uh, put a little tiny bit of actually controlled flock rather than where I've mass flocked the whole table um, and it should cover it up nicely. So it's got to go around like this, just scraping on the edge, being careful of your fingers and then I will hoover up and uh, get on with the next day. Okay, so I've finished uh, cleaning around the edges here. Uh, safety tip, uh, don't use a chisel towards your own hand. Uh, the classic cut away from yourself was not implemented on every step. So to make sure that this uh, actually fits the base and doesn't have any more debris left around the edge that's gonna cause a problem, I've got a base that I've just super glued a screw to, but anything will do, um, just to go around and test all of them to make sure they fit. So it's relatively flush. There's a little bit of damage around the edge, like I said, so I'm just gonna go around and um, dab on a little bit of brown paint to cover up the wood, then a little tiny bit of probably dirt mixed with PVA to make like a paste and just paint it on um, to cover up the edges, but generally speaking, that's looking pretty good. Any really bad uh, divots like I've got on this one here. I'll probably just put a bush there and hide that in a later stage, which I'll show shortly. So now that I've done this, I have got to um, tidy up the road because the edges of the road didn't get blended in because I did the road in the wrong order. So I'll be blending this in round here uh, with some dirt and then again, hiding any issues with the bushes. And I've got some grasses to add and then uh, once that's done, I'm pretty much at the stage where I just need to finish up the river. So it needs cleaning off because it's got various things on top of the resin that will clean off with a bit of soapy water. And I will then put a Mod Podge layer of gloss over the top to give it kind of a ripply effect. And at that point, I think I'm gonna call the project finished. It's not perfect. I will definitely be going over the uh, lessons learned uh, at the end of this video. So we'll start with looking at the trees and obviously I've got two types. I've got your deciduous tree and I've got your uh, evergreen conifer, pine tree, whatever you wanna call it. And uh, they started life as this. This is a Woodlands Scenic Tree Armature. Um, they come in different styles and sizes um, and they are um, injection molded plastic but the plastic is this kind of really flexible stuff so it's very bendy like this and the idea is that you take these flat form trees and you start turning them and twisting them and then it forms the skeleton of a tree. So you do this all the way along. Um, if you want to add a bit of character, you can take a look down here and make sure it looks well spread out. If you see that there's too many similar bits, you can kind of twist them again, clip the occasional one off to make a gap because trees obviously don't look perfect. And you end up with this tree skeleton. You can do the same with this one where you bend the branches and turn them in different directions and trim out any excess ones. And you end up with a tree shape. And what I didn't do was capture the footage of any of this process um, to do the initial stages. So once you've got this kind of tree shape, what I did was on the branch, do the latex covering stage next, you'll be able to see these seafoam pieces. It's a little bush and you break off pieces and stick it in the hobby tack. And then once it's gripped on the hobby tack, it's very, very sticky. Um, I put a drop of super glue on the joint, just a cheap 
uh, pound slash dollar store super glue um, let it set and it holds it all nicely in place so now I'll move on to the video that I did get which was the uh, latex covering stage all right, got the skeletons of the trees here made from the wooden Scenics armatures with the sea foam uh, glued on and the super glues all dried. So they are fairly well stuck in place, but the actual uh, sea foam itself will be a little bit brittle. Um, and right now, if I were to drop one of these trees or put it in a box, uh, these will slowly snap and uh, break away. So what I'm going to do is coat them in this latex. This is just uh, budget-friendly liquid latex, which you can even buy in craft stores. I bought mine online. Um, and a jug that's deep enough to dip the trees in. So I'm gonna pour this into the jug and then dip the trees in. I think this might just be a little bit too short. So some of the lower branches, I may have to just pour a little bit more onto them. Um, and then I will let some of it drip off as much as I can. Um, I will shake it uh, either into like a bin with a bin liner in it over here, or I'll probably just do it onto my garage floor because um, once it dries, you can just pick it off um, and then set them in these um, scrap pieces of wood where I've drilled a hole uh, to take the tree. And this will be so that it can s set and drip um, and I don't mind how it goes. So let's see how one tree goes. And then obviously I've got to repeat this across more trees at the back and then all these pine trees as well so 20 to do let's get started so a little time lapse of me pouring the liquid latex in and dunking the tree and then just flicking off the excess and bursting those bubbles the pine trees were actually too tall to fit in the jug so i've poured it into this takeaway container that i've cut a little slot in so that i can put the trunk in and then dip and turn it like this so that it gets a nice even coating on all of the sea foam and the branches and then letting it drain off. And what I've actually been doing is where I've got big bubbles forming between the branches, uh, blowing on them rather than flicking them. That way it blows the excess uh, latex back into the pot so I can reuse it. Right, full disclosure, I've no idea what the hell I'm doing, but I've created some makeshift uh, heat box again. It's about eight to 10 degrees in the UK today. Uh, these probably won't dry anytime soon uh, without it. Got a little radiator down here and this plastic sheeting set up with a bunch of clamps, hoping that that keeps it warm enough that this should set in about four to six hours, it says, but I'm going to give it like eight to ten and come back and do another coat and probably leave it overnight uh, with the radiator on low just to keep things nice and warm. Two layers should be enough to hold everything in place and uh, let's see how it comes out. So once that latex dried, I shot them with a uh, brown uh, primer um, to give them the undercolor like this. Um, and then I went over the trunks with some PVA glue and sprinkled on some dirt. As you can see, I've done only up to here. I need to do the rest after I finish the bases to kind of blend everything in. But it gives a really nice like bark-like texture and looks. It doesn't look like plastic anymore. Um, from the underside, you can see the, the blobs a little bit. Uh, but it's not too bad once you look at it from side on which is most of the gaming and top down it looks absolutely fine so again i use the tacky glue on the dried latex covered areas to uh, then sprinkle flock over and i used uh, this is coarse turf from woodland scenics and i then sealed it all in with i think three coats of sprayed on mod podge diluted in water um, and as you can see it's pretty tough i mean I don't want to do that with my trees but it just shows that they are very very durable absolutely nothing came off and now i need to just spray it again and then sprinkle from above um, some slightly brighter fine flock the fine turf flock um, to give it a bit of a highlight on the top so it looks like the sun's catching on the top and then the trees will be done and they'll just need to be based with some textures to match the board and then i'll blend in the blend in the trunks afterwards and i might do some rocks here and there and some grass tufts the occasional bush to make them visually interesting and different and they sit quite nicely in the board here and they're very tough and um, i will just be putting them uh, stored in a box together Right, so we are indoors now in order to get things to actually dry and I'm working on a couple of boards together because I can work on two at a time here. And I've got this one here uh, where I've done all the grasses and bushes and everything. And um, I've got this one at the back which I'll be working on next just to give you an idea of some of the things that are going on here. I'll try and zoom comfortably. And obviously I've done this um, 
ground covers and things previously and so here I've gone and added bushes and the grasses to kind of hide some issues and also to maybe make everything look a little bit more realistic and it really adds a nice bit of color variation. Uh, this is my test today I've done for the uh, modular pieces so this is where everything is on the discs that I mentioned so I can take it in and out nice and easily it allows me to change things up so like up here I've got an example if I don't want to have this big tree here I want to make it more of a rocky formation or like with the standing stones I can put this up here and then put the tree over here somewhere uh, and mix it up like that and I'll just move to the back here to show that these are the terrain pieces that I finished and um, it's the weather top style one that I've shown before and its base lifts out um, so that obviously I can swap it in and out for the, the other pieces that I have such as the tower for example so I'm going to go around and paint the edges in brown so you don't see these white lines um, and generally speaking they fit pretty well so overall the modularity looks like it's going to work nicely I'm going to move on to this backboard um, to do the demonstration on so I'll show how I'm putting all the bushes on and doing the grasses I've got this bridge to work on where there's some ugly joints between the bridge piece that comes out um, and where it sits that'll hide with as much shrubbery as possible and what I'm going to be using is the Woodland Scenics clump foliage so I've got three colors I've got like a dark green um, I've got like a medium green and then I've got a light um, kind of like faded green it's actually a little brighter in the video than it looks in real life um, and then I'm going to be applying all of these onto the board piece with um, PVA glue uh, I like this Wilco dispenser because it's got a long tip that lets you kind of get in and under things when you really need to um, to help uh, the glue um, kind of hold everything together I've got thinned down uh, Mod Podge in a pot and I'll be putting that on with a pipette and before I put that on I'll be spraying everything with this um, ISO or methylated spirits um, mix in order to help everything soak in otherwise it kind of sits on top with like little bubbles um, and finally I've got a whole selection of grass now I buy mine from uh, gamers grass because they're the best ones that I've seen um, if you have a static grass applicator and all that you can do your own um, but there's some special ones like this one which is the uh, bristly bushes they've actually got little uh, bristles on them um, so they look really nice. I try and tuck them away, um, which I'll show you when I apply them so they don't get um, damaged and broken by models being moved on them as much, but they are pretty durable so far. So I'll move everything around and get set up to get working on this board. Right, I'll start working on this section up here because there's a couple of bits that I actually want to hide first of all. So I've got some bits here where I uh, left some of the plaster showing um, and there's a straight line crack here that's less visible on the video and then there's this little recess here and a couple of bits along the front of the cliff edge which don't look so great. So what I'll do is I will put on a reasonably generous amount of um, just normal PVA, nothing fancy going on here and this will be what holds the tufts and um, the clumps in place so there's this rock cleft here that's got a nasty bit going on there and then there's a bit here where I didn't smooth it out very well so all these little issues that are not that bad um, but just need a little bit of cover up um, you can work on with the clump so I put the glue down like that and leave it quite thick and then what I do is I will get a bit of the clump foliage so I'll start with some dark green here and I'll just push it into the PVA like that and then let it let it sit and again I'll do that here and then what I'll do is I'll switch to the next color so I'll go for a mid green here um, and you the clumps come in a variety of different sizes sometimes they're quite big like this and round and it doesn't look very good like a bush but if you slowly tear it it then tears into pieces like this that looks way more like a bush so I can then put that alongside this one and the color doesn't look identical um, but there is a bit of variation there and then you go in with the third color so this pale green and kind of tuck it in under there and then these variety of colors next to each other kind of make it look way 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 more natural terrible putting my arm in front of the camera there and I'll just go across and do this here. So aside from covering up errors, this is also really good to add a lot of realism by putting bushes in places that bushes would grow. So I'll under these rock overhangs for here, for example, it doesn't look quite right just having rocks there and nothing growing. So I'm gonna put quite a thick, generous coating of the PVA down here. And I'll put a little run of bushes under here. And again, um, I'm tearing pieces if I need to tear pieces um, and I'm just tucking in a variety of the colors so I've got my three pots open in front of me off camera and I'm just picking up 
a mixture of the different pieces and you've got to make sure you push it down into the PVA glue. Now obviously, as you can see from where I'm pressing it, it's really quite soft the foam. Um, and when we come to the next stage, um, we'll be toughening that up with the glues so that it actually stands up to you know a lifetime's worth of gaming. Um, the pieces that I've finished, that I've now packed away, um, the, the bushes are super solid, like they are never gonna come off that board um, or get damaged during play at all. Uh, they will last for a long, long, long time because the PVA glues uh, really toughen them up. So I put these in along here. And then the next thing to do is to take a look at the bridge. So I've got the bridge here. I need to kind of blend these pieces in together. So this is where this piece will go on to this gap like this. So I've got this unsightly gap here. Now, what I'm gonna do, rather than flock along here, I'm just gonna put a whole row of bushes that will kind of grow in the protection of the bridge. And by having them stuck to just the bridge piece, which, and be above this, I'll be able to put this on without them getting in the way. And what it'll do is it'll hide the join because they'll be sitting on top of it. So I will actually probably shore this bridge up on some pieces of card underneath glue them on, let them set, and then I'll be able to put it on without there being any problems. Right, the last bit I'm gonna do is to add some grasses. So you can see I've actually put some in the um, bridge piece up here to kind of hide in the corners where grass would be able to grow, and I probably will do the same um, like along this bank here where there's a bit of a bank and an overhang. I'll put a couple of pieces of grass in there, and what I'll do is show you how I'm doing this. So I'll start with a, one of these wiry tufts. So I just pluck them off the tuft mat, as you normally would, and they come out here with this base of glue on them. This isn't actually that sort of sticky tacky glue, it's just where it's dried firm. So I'm just gonna put some PVA on the bottom. You do not need a huge amount, um, just enough like that. I find that the water in the PVA kind of reactivates whatever glue's under there, and then when the PVA soaks into here and sticks down, it's really quite firm. So again, just put, put them on the board in the place you want them and kind of push them down into the middle of the tuft. Don't worry about squashing the fibers because they'll spring back and then that way you get a nice firm bond with the board. And uh, once the PVA glue dries, you won't see that little bit of whiteness. And it just really breaks up the surface and makes it look a lot more realistic. So I'll probably put a couple growing on top of this rock. Might be a little bit down here at the water's edge, not decided on that yet. And then I'll give you an example of what it kind of looks like when it's finished with the, with the building here. So you can see I've kind of hidden a couple of join issues where I wanted like the dead grass to be growing on the dried grass to be growing on top of the building um, in like the dirt areas that have gathered. And then down here, I've put these little wiry pieces here. And these are the, the foam bushes and you can hear probably that is very, very firm once the glue's dried and set on it. So it's not gonna be going anywhere at all and it adds just that extra bit of realism to the whole thing. Okay, the last stage to do once the glue that you've applied it to the board with has dried overnight, you can see it's still a bit wet where you see the white bits in there. So I'm not gonna do any uh, wet work on this now because it'll probably just water down that glue that's binding it to the train piece and it'll just start falling off and sliding around all over the place. So I will show you on this board uh, what I mean. So in here, I've got Mod Podge Matte, uh, which is a similar to PVA glue. It's the stuff used for decoupage. It is a lot, uh, it dries a lot harder than PVA glue and it doesn't um, get wet again like PVA glue does so it won't come off as you do later stages. I've watered it down about five parts water to one part glue so it's quite thin. But if I put a drip of it onto the board and I'll just briefly zoom in on I think this bit down here. So if I try and put a drop on this bush for example, I just put a drop on kind of sits on top and doesn't really do much. Eventually it soaks in because it's already had a couple of layers, but if I grab a spare piece of foam here, and this is just off the off the piece and put this blob on top, like you see it just doesn't sit on there, it just runs off onto my fingers and doesn't soak in, which is absolutely useless. So what we've got to do is we've got to hit it with um, some isopropyl alcohol spray, and I will do that on this one up here as an example that needs some on there. So it's just a tiny little spray. You really don't need a lot. Now, when I put this on, it will soak in like straight away. See, it doesn't sit around on top at all. Just soak straight into the bush. You want it to be nice and uh, soaked like that. I'll just put drips, drips, and then I leave it. So overnight, that'll dry. Probably need two lots of layers, maybe three if you want it really tough and you're not in a rush. Um, and it goes rock solid. Um, I've been putting a fan um, 
probably seen in the background the fan there on the table just a cheapo desk fan that rotates backwards and forwards and that makes things dry much much better and uh, leaves you with a really really durable terrain piece i mean i'm not worried about any of the cover coming off this at all um it's never it's never going to come off after you know a few games but after you know a couple of years worth of play you might find some areas are a bit thin but then you can just put on more watered down pva glue um, a dash more of the various basing materials and you can easily fix what's uh, what's been damaged right so fairly confident this is gonna be the uh, penultimate video on this because all i've got left to do after these sections are finished is to do the river so i need to make sure that the uh, water surface is cleaned off here because it's gotten various glues and things on it which is not too difficult to do at all then into the ripply water surface to go on top which is a really easy step and then after that it's going to be pretty much taking a look at the board as a whole um, and seeing uh, what my thoughts are on the entire process and uh, pretty much a rundown of what I would do differently next time because uh, there's definitely plenty of lessons learned but overall I think this has gone really really well It'll be interesting to see how all the board sections look together when they're finished and how the, the buildings can swap around but uh, so far pretty happy with uh, being right at the last hurdle. So I'll catch you guys uh, for the uh, next and final part of the vlog.